Uh, so, I'm Punima. I work for Gluster team. So, mostly on Samba Gluster integration and few other parts of Gluster performance and other things. So, uh, Vijay and you all would be knowing him. And uh, so, yeah, uh, today what we'll be talking about is mostly about uh, GF proxy, what is its current state, and what's it upstream right now. Um, so for those who have not heard the last time's Facebook talk on GF Proxy, uh, just a bit of introduction on it. Um, so the current architecture of client and server looks like this. Basically, we have a client more intelligent, which does the clustering part, distribute, replicate, and all that. And then we have a Bricks, which is less intelligent than the client. So what are the cons with this approach? Uh, basically, it's it's a little difficult to upgrade all the clients. Uh, I mean, clients will be more than the number of servers. And if you would have to upgrade to a new feature, you would have to upgrade it to all the clients. And it would be more number of machines and things like that. But yeah, apart from that, um, the other thing is, let's say you have uh, um, Samba or container native storage where your number of uh, clients for the particular volume which is on the trusted storage pool itself will be like in thousands so you don't do not want to have a thousand clients client processes running the same um, client wall file and things like that so it's basically duplicating the number of resources threads everything so and the bandwidth, bandwidth consumption on the client so uh, it's like if you have replica 3 you will be using three times the bandwidth on the client side um, as uh, with respect to one once if the client had to play it once and the server took care of all this uh, replication and distribution so uh, hence gf proxy so with the gf proxy uh, it looks uh, the the architecture looks like this basically we have thin client with the thin client uh, we have just uh, two or three x -lators. We have Fuse, uh, followed by AHA or the Quias translator for the high availability part. Then we have right behind for reasons uh, that maybe we can talk later. Then we have protocol client, which talks to GF proxy daemon. This G G GF proxy daemon is basically the client, the whole of client, uh, which, ha which has the performance, x -lators, DHT, AFR, uh, replication, EC, and all that. And the GF proxy daemon basically talks to the brick processes. So uh, the first thing that comes to mind looking at this is basically uh, we had one network op in this uh, architecture. Now we make it two network ops. So what about the performance? So in this case, um, the thing is, if GeoProxy daemon is run on the same node where your clients are running, it's not much a hit. Because it would be basically loopback network op. Uh, but if it has to be run on a different node, if all the three runs on a different node, definitely there will be performance hit. Uh, yeah. Uh, going back, what's the current state of GF proxy? Okay, so initially, the initial implementation of this was basically done by Facebook, and it was merged in 3.2 branch. Uh, what is taken to master is, as of now, a uh, glustery part of changes. Uh, we added daemon management to it and uh, port mapping to it. So, uh, and also, uh, it automatically starts GF proxy daemon on all the nodes when it is enabled and things like that. And uh, uh, we are exploring on AHA and Quias for high availability. Uh, failover is sort of implemented for AHA translator. Then uh, basic, uh, for 313 upstream, we have targeted it as uh, experimental feature. And uh, what needs to be done is a dynamic graph search. As of now, uh, uh, this GF proxy daemon um, does not uh, have, uh, I mean, when, when we do volume set operation, uh, it basically restarts the daemon. So that's that's basically, um, th that's how GNFS, Gluster NFS does. But the, we do have seen issues of EIO happening when we do volume set like that and restart the GNFS. So we do not want to get into that. And also, uh, the next thing is volume multiplexing. Let's say in CNS setup, we have like thousands of volumes and we do not want to run thousands of GF proxy daemons. So we need volume multiplexing. This makes it 
necessitates more the graph switch part. Basically, if one of the volumes that happens to one of the volumes, we do not want to restart like for all the thousand volumes the GF proxy demons. So uh, these two uh, are quite important to make it uh, production ready. And uh, yeah, and uh, what we target is uh, Gluster T2 integration. Basically, we have to redo all the Gluster D changes that we have done to Gluster D1 in Gluster D2. Uh, so that uh, so I think the full fledged JF proxy with Gluster 2 is targeted for 4.0, and uh, yeah, so, yeah. Okay, so um, memory and uh, uh, so um, as of now, if we just do all these changes, the memory consumption on the thin client doesn't as such reduce. We have to do some code changes to really reduce the memory consumption and the thread consumption on the thin client part of it. Then. Uh, allow as of now the current implementation doesn't allow gf proxy daemon to be run outside trusted storage pool uh, because gluster d manages the port mapping and uh, starting and stopping of the daemons so uh, maybe uh, for certain use cases we could have a tunable which lets it to be uh, run outside of the trusted storage pool that is one part and uh, yeah for more details on implementation and other discussions and things like that you could refer to issue 24 yeah, issue 242. Uh, that's uh, pretty much all I had and uh, which I... Thank you. So what GF Proxy does is it uh, reduces the functionality on the client stack. So basically your clients become thinner. And uh, one of the problems that we encounter today is access from uh, Windows and Mac clients. Uh, today, uh, most of those accesses happen through SMB protocol. Uh, it's not the most performant. Yeah, we've done a bunch of improvements. So given that uh, the client is going to be thin in the future with GF proxy, we could uh, easily port uh, the relevant parts of the client stack, that is primarily AHA and pass through fuse that GF proxy needs to both Windows and Mac. Uh, and what has happened in the recent past is that uh, there have been uh, improved versions of uh, fuse on uh, both Windows and Mac. Uh, there are links to this. Windows used to have something called Doken. Uh, that's been uh, replaced by this project, which is quite promising and a lot of uh, File systems like SSHFS already have uh, Windows clients based on this. Uh, the same with Mac. Uh, there is to be Mac Fuse that's been replaced by, uh, that's deprecated, and OSX Fuse is where uh, a lot of uh, attention is going towards. Again, you have SSHFS and other file systems leveraging this. So in the not too distant future, uh, we might have uh, native clients for GF proxy on both Windows and Mac. So these are early days yet. We don't know what the performance is going to look like and uh, what it would mean. But it is promising, and we might be able to eventually get multi-protocol with GF proxy fuse and NFS and other things which we've been struggling to get with uh, NFS and SMB without uh, uh, reducing the scope of all the work that has happened in the space, right? So it might happen. So these are some early trends. So calling it out as part of this summit. Hopefully by next summit, we should have something available. So that's about it. Any questions or thoughts? <laughs> <laughs> So I'm just wondering what what the trade-off is between context switching, having a GF proxy on the client, versus on an, on another box, and you know, uh, context switching relative to the network latency. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. I think Purnima addressed one part of it, right? So where you could have a GF proxy D running on the same ser uh, server. So that is not going to be very appealing in the case of uh, Mac and Windows, because you would have to port the entire 
client stack to uh, Mac and Windows. Mac probably is not so difficult because our code does compile, yeah, I think the latest still does not compile, but getting the client stack or GeoProxyD to work on Mac is probably not so difficult, but on Windows it would be in a uh, lot more effort. Uh, so we got to see, I mean, as I said, I mean, these are early days yet. Once uh, we have some uh, performance characterization, we would be able to answer this better. Thanks. So question about, uh, I mean, obviously about uh, native client for Windows. So I think still Windows applications would um, act through some Win32 library, uh, like Windows NT kind of semantics. So it would still need to be translated into POSIX semantics. And I think I would still expect a good amount of overhead in, in now maybe in that Fuse library in Windows, I don't know, so I would need to check, but uh, I'm, I'm a little bit skeptical that you would see like a super huge uh, benefit because you would still need to solve the same problem that Samba currently solves on the server side. Well, that's true, but uh, for a certain category of use cases, I would expect that this could be a much more native integration without the requirement to set up any high availability on the server side could work out better. But again, these are very early thoughts. I mean, just uh, mentioning that. And uh, I know that a lot of work has happened in the summer community. And a simple native client cannot replace all the work that has happened. Right? So yeah, exactly. So uh, we got to see how this works out or pans out. <coughs> Maybe one more question for me. So um, if I look at these now three layers, basically, the thin client, the, the proxy client part, and then the server part. So if we put, the, for instance, for the Samba use case, sometime in the future when this works, or if it's all co-located, if the proxy is actually co-located with the thin clients, then we can omit the age, aha translator part, right? So the, the high availability is then in the, AF, um, in, in the middle stack, right? OK, good. Makes it even more simple. Exactly. Thanks. Yep. All right. Oh, okay. Oop, uh, thanks. So last year, if I recall properly, uh, Facebook uh, uh, had a presentation on the same topic, and now it's Red Hat. So uh, what happened that the kind of stewardship of the project has moved to Red Hat from Facebook? <laughs> Would you want to answer that? Um, yeah. Uh, we've just, we've got a very small team at Facebook and uh, we, our intent originally was to replace the use case of native fuse with, with GF proxy. Um, in the last year or so, uh, we've sort of shifted our attention more towards the end user side because the majority of traffic is still NFS. Um, it, we haven't abandoned it or anything. Like we, we're, we still make patches to it. We still have tests that run against it. We still have a goal of replacing our Fuse clients with GF Proxy, but we just have a small team, so we've had to shift attention to NFS. Yeah, and from a Red Hat perspective, what we have started noticing is that uh, uh, typically, the upgrades on the clients are proving to be painful for some of our large deployments. So having something like GF proxy would uh, simplify it operationally. So that was a key motivation for us. And uh, even on uh, Samba-based accesses, we've been seeing increased memory footprints and uh, things of that sort with uh, multiple Samba connections. So we are hoping that GF proxy would alleviate that. And hence, those are the key drivers for us to pick up uh, GF proxy. So the latter part where I talked about more native clients is just an afterthought. It's an emerging thing. So that is where it is. Right, cool. <laughs> <laughs>